بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد continuing on in our lessons pertaining to purification or tahara in the book umdat al ahkam we reach the hadith in reference to uh, purifying oneself and the manners of using the restroom, meaning the etiquettes of using the restroom, uh, the etiquettes before using the restroom. And these are some very important etiquettes for us to keep in mind. And so we're going to read two ahadith and some of the benefits that uh, Shaykh Ali Bassam rahimahullah ta'ala that he mentioned and from what we studied bi'idhnillah ta'ala An Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu annahu qal kana rasulullahi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yurkhil al-khala fa'ahmalu ana wa ghulam nahwi adawatan min ma wa anazatan fal yastanjil bil ma huwahu Bukhari wa Muslim wa anazatan al-anaza Harba Sagira. So in this hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that was narrated by Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu. He said that the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to when he would enter the area or place he was going to use the restroom, that he would take uh Anas ibn Malik radiallahu ta'ala anhu and another boy in order to uh, serve the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. They would bring the water for the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam and help to conceal him so that no one could see him. So they would carry maybe the spear and carry and, and place the spear in the earth and then put a cloth so no one could see the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So they were and they would bring the water as well to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam radiyallahu ta'ala anam and so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he used to uh, then Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu ta'ala anhu and another boy would bring the water to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his spear and then the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would use that water to cleanse, him, clean, cleanse himself when he was using the restroom in this hadith, there are several benefits the Sheikh mentioned, and one of them is that it is permissible to uh, to just only use water for istinja. So, for example, if you have the ability to use rocks and toilet paper or whatever the situation is to make istijmar, it is permissible to make istinja. Just use water. And vice versa, it is permissible to use, if you have water, to just use the istijmar, the rocks. Both of them are permissible. And this is one of the things we get from this hadith. And the Shaykh mentioned a great benefit that from Imam An-Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala. Imam Nawawi said a very beautiful statement which gives us all of these benefits that we're going to mention in one beautiful, concise statement. This, uh, this uh, uh, alama, this alam rabbani, Imam Nawawi, he said, فَالَّذِي عَلَيْهِ جَمَعَةَ السَّلَفْ وَالْخَلَفْ وَأَجْمَعُ عَلَيْهِ أَهْلَ الْفَتْوَى مِنْ آئِمَّةَ الْأَمْصَارِ أن الأفضل أن يجمع بين الماء والهجارة فليستعمل الهجر أولا لتخف لتخفف النجاسة وتقل مباشرتها بيده ثم يستعمل الماء فإن أراد الاقتصار على أهدهما جاز الاقتصار على أيهما شاء so wajid al akhir um la aw lam yujid fa in aqtasara ala ahadihim fal ma afdal min al hajr so this is a beautiful statement right here imam nawawi gives us everything these principles very concisely he says so what the uh, uh, um 
a great the view of many of the Salaf and the Khalaf, those who came after them, Tabin, Tabin, those who came later, those later generations of scholars. What they were upon, or the view that they held, and and in addition to them, the people of Fatwa, you know, the, the great Imams that gave the Muftis. That and the the Imams from around the world, that they were in agreement that it is better to use wa- uh, water to make istijma, uh, ist- istinja, wa istijmar, to make a combination of the two. So to use water to clean your private parts after you use the restroom, as well as using rocks. That is the best. That is the best and the most purest. And then he said that you should use the rocks first. Then, and, and that's in order to get rid of most of the, the uh, filth, the najasa. And that way it reduces the chance that you'll get some of it on your hands. Because of course in their times they didn't use toilet paper. And sometimes you find in your own situation you may not have toilet paper or anything, uh, any Kleenex or what have you to uh, clean yourself with. So they using the rocks first in order to get rid of majority the najasa, then using water. And if you want to use either one of those, it's permissible. Imam Noah he said, and you can start with any one, or you can use any one you wish. He also said, and if you do not find one, and you find the other, or He's basically saying that there's a you have a choice in the matter, and that it, it isn't uh, that it's all permissible. And then he says, the best though, if you have to choose between the two, if you have to choose be- between istinjawa istijmar, you know, using the rocks and using the water, then of course it's better and more it's more pure, or it's purer, and it's better to use the water. So if you have to choose between the two, use water. Water is better. But either one of this is permissible. Even if you have water and you choose to use rocks, you're choosing the least of the, least of the two uh, beneficial ways of purifying yourself, and it's still permissible. So those are some of the benefits that Imam Noah uh, related for us. Uh, another benefit of this hadith, it shows us the importance of when you're using the restroom that you should uh, you should you you should try to use the restroom. Of course, inside of a building, it's very different. We have restrooms in these time in this time and age, so we have the privacy we need. But if you're in a situation where there is no privacy, you should strive your utmost to find a place where you're away from people, where people cannot see your private parts and they cannot see you using the restroom. And as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did, he used a spear and he used a cloth or something in order to conceal himself from the people so that people walking by, they could not see him. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that is the best way and those are some of the manners that we should observe when um, when using the restroom. In another hadith, this hadith also refers to the to purifying ourselves and some of the manners relating to a tahara and, and using the restroom. An Abi Qatada Harith ibn Rabi'i Rabi'i Al Ansari Radiallahu Tala Anhu and an Abiya Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Akal La Yemasakana Ahadakum Zakaruhu be Yamini Wahu Yabul. Wala Yatamas min Khilai be Yamini Wala Yatanafis fil Ina. Rahu Bukhari wa Muslim. In this hadith uh, of Abi Qatada al Harith bin Rabi'i al Ansari radiallahu ta'ala anhu, meaning he was from Ahla Medina, he was from the Ansar, and he assisted the Muhajireen radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in. He said, uh, he said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that one of you should not. Uh, wipe his his private part with his right hand while he's while he's urinating, and he should not wipe uh, with his right right hand as well. 
and he should not breathe in a, the water container. And this is collected in Bukhari and Muslim. So in this hadith, there are many uh, benefits. But before we get to the, the things that we can gain from this hadith, we'll talk very briefly about some of the, the ikhtilaf. And the ikhtilaf is, is very uh, minute in relation to this hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. The ikhtilaf of ulama. هل النهي لتحريم أو لكراهية؟ So the scholars they differed regarding this hadith. Is it uh, is the prohibition in this hadith about uh, you know using your right hand while you urinate? Is this prohibition? Is this prohibition? Haram, meaning it's completely haram if you do it, or does this prohibition refer to it being disliked? So this is where the the, the contention is between the ulama and this uh, related to this hadith. For uh, al-zahiriya ila tahrim. So the ala madhab al-zahiriya, for example, uh, Imam uh, a Dawood al-Zahiri, rahmatullah alayh, or Imam uh, Ibn Hazm. They held, the, uh, according to their madhab, the zahiriya, they went with the zahir of this hadith, the apparent meaning of ha- this hadith, which is that it is prohibited to do this. Meaning if you do uh, wipe, if you, ho- you should not hold your private part, being a male, uh, with when you're urinating. And you should not wipe with your right hand as well. So he held that this is a prohibition because an al amr yafidu al wujub that when there's a commandment from the Quran, meaning from Allah subhanahu wa taala, or there's a commandment from the Sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in authentic hadith, then the asl or the the origin of that commandment is that it's prohibited. Unless there is evidence to show that it, it, it leaves being prohibited to something which is disliked or etc. So that was the position of the Zahiriya. The other, the Jamhur of the Ulama, the majority of the scholars hold that it is disliked. Meaning that it is not a sin if you do it, but it's dislike that you do it. You should stay. You should avoid this habit. This is not from the manners and the etiquettes of using the restroom in Islam. That one should avoid holding on to their private part when they're using the restroom with their right hand. But rather, they should use their left and they should use their uh, left hand for cleaning themselves as well. What we gain from this hadith... The Sheikh said, Rahmatullah he said, this hadith uh, shows us the prohibition of uh, holding on or w- wiping the, uh, the private part with the right hand while one is urinating. Another benefit we gain from this hadith is a prohibition of making istinja, you know, using uh, water bil yumna with the right hand. So you should not use your right hand to grasp your private part or to clean it with, but rather you should use it to pour the water upon your uh, private part. And the third benefit uh, that he mentioned regarding this hadith is a prohibition to of breathing in a water container. So for example, if we're drinking water and we're sharing water or even if we're not sharing water, we should not breathe in the container, hold the container and drinking, <sighs> breathing in the container. Why? Because of course this spreads germs and it shows us that Islam is very uh, is a religion of purity and the Prophet Sallallahu ordered us with, pur- with uh, purity and cleanliness and those things which would minimize the spread of germs and filth. So uh, this is one of the other benefits we gain from this hadith that we should not, that we should be cautious about making our drinking containers filthy or the places we're going to make wudu filthy or anything filthy. We should strive our best to be uh, pure and pure in our actions, pure in our hearts, pure in our minds and our thoughts, in all that we do. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Anything we said, uh, anything I said that was correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said that was incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.